Welcome to Techniques and Information for People Who Are Blind or Visually Impaired, offered by the State of Connecticut Bureau of Education and Services for the Blind, also known as BESB, which is part of the Department of Aging and Disability Services. Hello, my name is Mark Rafferty. I'm a vision rehabilitation teacher with the Connecticut Bureau of Education and Services for the Blind, commonly referred to as BESB, B-E-S-B, which is the acronym and we are part of the Department of Aging and Disability Services. In today's video, I'm going to show techniques and strategies for individuals who are visually impaired or blind for threading a sewing needle um, so that they may be able to perform uh, basic um, sewing tasks, perhaps basic mending or reattaching a button. And um, the type of needle threading I'm doing is not for machine sewing, but again, for hand sewing. So I'm gonna present some options to you today um, recognizing that this is a challenge for a lot of individuals, um, whether they have vision impairment or not. Um, sometimes um, fine motor issues or arthritis or other conditions factor in, and so uh, some other groups might find this, these strategies helpful. The first strategy I'd like to talk about is the availability of pre-threaded needles um, that are available in many big box stores where sewing notions are sold, or even at some uh, drug stores or supermarkets where they have um, smaller sections oftentimes where they have things like um, shoe care products like shoelaces and polish they oftentimes um, sell um, so a small collection of sewing notions in those areas so those are places you can check out um, the downside to pre-threaded needles that are commercially available is that the needles themselves are intended to be disposable they're used, they're used once and they're simply discarded and um, the thread and the needles themselves aren't of the best quality and you may end up with uh, colors of thread that you might seemingly never use based on your own wardrobe needs. Um, another option that I really, really like um, would be simply to ask a friend or a loved one to pre-thread some needles for you. And I've actually done that here. And I have in front of me a, an envelope that I've marked black, one that I've marked navy, one that I've marked white. You might use other colors. And uh, depending on your own individual needs, but inside of this envelope, um, the needle has been pre-threaded by an individual and wrapped around a piece of cardstock. This is actually the top to a cereal box. You could use the, the end of the roll of the uh, paper towel or an index card, whatever you happen to have on handy. But I do recommend rather than placing it simply in the envelope, so it might get tangled, to wrap it around something. And in this case, I've also taken a little bit of tape uh, to secure the needle so they don't get poked uh, when removing it from the envelope. These are great if you're traveling. Um, for individuals, um, maybe perhaps if you have a uh, college student that's going off to school, one never knows when this type of need will come up. Um, so it's a great item to have. Another strategy today, uh, the third strategy I'd like to show is the ability to go ahead and um, buy what's called open eye or um, uh, locking sewing needles. Um, these are needles that have a top to them, and I don't know if it's going to really show here in this video. Probably not because it's very small, but essentially it's a sewing needle, but the eye is designed a little bit differently than a conventional needle. Conventional needle has a, you know, a loop that the thread passes through. This you're going to pass the thread over the um, needle and you're going to kind of push down on it. And it's there's like a little um, hinge or a little gate on the top of the needle that secures the thread in place. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have a little bit of a scrap of this. Um, you may have seen this in other videos that I've done. Um, it's a, um, this is rubberized shelf liner. You can buy this again at a big box store. Um, they have some for let, that's a little bit lesser, uh, quality, but certainly less expensive at the dollar store. It comes in different colors. It's almost like the product that goes underneath scatter rugs to prevent them from sliding. I'm going to place a bar of soap on top of that. Um, I prefer to use this over other products like a pin cushion. I've been asked whether that's a good idea. This has a little bit less give and it will not dull the needle. Um, so... In substitute of this, although soap is pretty common, you might use a pillar candle, provided it's a hard wax. Um, I've also heard of folks using a wine cork, um, the natural cork, not the synthetic variety, because they're too hard. So in any case, I'm going to take the needle, and I'm going to go ahead and pierce the bar of soap with the needle. And it does, it will move slightly, but I want to just point out that it's there, and I'm going to bring it up close. I don't know if you can see the needle in the video. I'm also going to take some thread, and I'm going to wrap it between my two index fingers and my thumbs, much like you would do with dental floss. And this will probably take a time or two, and if the needle 
perhaps falls out of your hand or gets knocked over. This is actually a refrigerator magnet, which is helpful to pick the needle up off the counter or a flat surface. Sometimes it's hard to pick them up. So um, just as a thought to have one of those nearby. And I'm going to simply go ahead and take my thumb and index finger. You got to get this pretty close. And I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to, the needle just did not stay straight, but this is a live video here. So it just goes to show you that it's like getting on a bicycle. If it happens to come undone, you try, try and try again until you succeed. And you may have to tilt the, or turn the bar of soap a little bit too. There you go. When you hear a little click, you may have heard that click in the video. And what I've done now is I have knotted, I have not knotted it, but the thread is actually passed through the eye of the needle. As you can see, as I'm holding it up, the needle is now dangling. I did pre-knot one end of the thread, and now you can go ahead and simply tie this off, and um, you're good to go. Um, I'm going to slide this out of the way. I want to also present you a couple of other options that are don't involve a needle, um, but depending on the type of clothing repair that you might want to do, um, these are also options. These have been around for years. There's made a couple of different manufacturers. This is hem tape. It's an iron-on type tape. Um, if you're not comfortable using a, um, a, a steam iron, um, this is probably not a good choice for you. Um, but these are available if you had a hem that came down um, on a pair of pants or something like that. That's a good option. Um, also, you need to obviously follow the instructions very clearly. They're not appropriate for all uh, textiles. Um, synthetic fabrics, certainly you would use a very low heat. These tend to require a higher heat. So check the type of fabric or textile that you're using it on. And also consider whether you're safe with an iron. Um, this is another product that's been around for a long time. Um, it's a liquid product. It's kind of like glue. Um, not perfect, but sometimes that can be used to go ahead and repair a small tear in something like the lining of a pocket. Or just think it's a little bit more discreet. So. I hope these uh, tips uh, were helpful to all of you, and should you have questions, please feel free to call Besby at one of the following two telephone numbers, 1-800-842-4510 within the state of Connecticut, um, that would say, number is good uh, statewide, or anywhere out of the state of Connecticut or locally, you may dial 860-602-4000. Again, Mark Rafferty with Besby, and I thank you for watching, and I wish you a great day. For more information, please contact Besby at 860-602-4000.